my dear sisters and brothers let me ask you a question a very simple question you take a glass of water and put two spoonful sugar into that glass of water and then you taste it will that water be sweet yes yes what do housewives say no no well the water will not be sweet for the water to be sweet you must stir the water when you stir the water the water and the sugar will become one the molecules of sugar will enter into water and the water will be sweet otherwise the sugar will remain somewhere in the bottom of the glass without any connection to the water now this is exactly what happens to the holy spirit all of us we have received the holy spirit at the moment of our baptism haven't we and every time we receive a sacrament this anointing of the holy spirit becomes more and more fresh in us and yet we are not able to feel the taste of the holy spirit what is the taste of the holy spirit how does the holy spirit taste well st paul tells us galatians chapter 5 galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 then paul tells us of the taste of the holy spirit there are nine tastes for the holy spirit these are the fruits of the holy spirit when the holy spirit enters into us these nine characteristics these nine powers will be found the fruits of the holy spirit love and peace and joy and patience and kindness and goodness and self control and gentleness faithfulness the nine fruits of the holy spirit now this is the taste of the holy spirit i should be able to feel the love of the holy spirit what is this love this love is a power a power that enables us enables us to commit our life to the other say love in marriage a husband is able to commit his life to the wife to the extent of accepting her even when she is unacceptable even if he is unacceptable even when he or she does something unacceptable i'm able to accept him i'm able to accept her and often it happens in family life there is some unacceptability or other i'm not able to understand her why she does this and yet i'm able to love her i'm able to be patient with him now this is the holy spirit this is the holy spirit and when temptations come our way and temptations are bound to come jesus said we are living in a very sinful world are in we in a very sinful world and therefore some attraction to a sinful pleasure or sinful gain drawing us to that evil 
this is bound to happen but then there's the power of self control i'm able to feel it in my heart the holy spirit the holy spirit enabling me enabling me to say no to that sinful attraction the same power that jesus felt when the temptation came to him to change the stone to bread jesus knew that was not the will of the father that did not come from the father jesus could feel the power the power of the holy spirit in that power of the holy spirit jesus could say get behind me satan now that's the power of self control i'm able to control myself haven't you heard people saying i lost the control and i did something wrong i decided not to drink but when when my friends compelled me temptation when my friends compelled me i could not hold on i drank i drank well he could not feel the power of the holy spirit and why is this someone shouts at me someone shouts at me and i feel my peace is lost my joy is lost and i'm disturbed i'm disturbed when i lose my peace i'm disturbed i'm disturbed and i shouted back shouted back and what am i doing i'm living a very natural life natural life that isaac newton spoke about action reaction action reaction someone someone shouts at me i'm disturbed i lose my peace i lose my joy i lose my patience i'm disturbed and i shout back i shout back this is a very natural sort of life and jesus does not want us to live a natural life jesus wants us to live a supernatural life on this earth god entering into our hearts at every moment of our life so when someone shouts at me and i am disturbed the holy spirit is waiting the holy spirit is waiting to make his presence felt to give me the power power of self control to give me the power of joy in my heart a power of patience in my heart and that's why jesus said when someone strikes you on the right cheek what to do what did jesus say give it back to him now that is a natural way what animals are doing that's the way of the animals that's the way of the material world action reaction jesus said when someone strikes you on the right cheek jesus said wait and pray i wait and pray in order to rise above rise above the natural reaction and become supernatural when do we become supernatural we become supernatural when god enters into us when the holy spirit enters into me i can feel the power I can feel the power of the love of the holy spirit i can look at this man who is angry he's my brother he's hiking me and i i am able to pray feel the power of love feel the power of joy feel the power of patience feel the power of self control and i can tell him my friend are you still angry i have one more cheek if you care to strike me once again well 
That's what a Christian is. That's what a Christian life is. Jesus said, when someone takes your coat away, someone doing injustice to you, the natural thing is to go to the court. Go to the court, court of justice. And I complain to the police. I complain to the court. I want my court back. Jesus said, let him have the shirt as well. Let him have the shirt as well. I don't question why he took my coat away. Maybe poor man is feeling cold. I don't judge him. I don't judge him. I wait upon God in prayer. A Christian life is a constant, constant waiting upon God in prayer. For God's Spirit, for the Holy Spirit to descend upon me. I will be able to say, my friend, do you care for my shirt as well? Well, here is my shirt. Give to him. Someone compels you to walk one mile. Someone compels you to walk one mile. What is the natural reaction? How can you compel me? I have my freedom. I will not come with you. No, Jesus said, go with him two miles. You want me to walk with you one mile? I'm ready for two miles. Now, how are we able to do this? This is the supernatural life. The power of the Holy Spirit descending upon us, enabling us, giving us the grace to become supernatural. That's what the angel said to Mother Mary. Mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph. She was not living with Joseph yet. They had no relations yet. And she was told by the angel she would conceive and bear a son. Mother Mary thought about it. How can that be? And she said, I have no relations with Joseph. How can this be? Because in order for a woman to conceive and bear a son, she should have a relation with a man. That's a natural way. Natural way. But the angel said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And you are being invited by God to rise above the natural. Rise above the natural and live a supernatural life. And Mother Mary got the promise. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. The power of the Almighty will overshadow you. Mother Mary said, Here am I, your handmaid. Let it be done to me according to your word. Mother Mary teaches us how to become supernatural. How to be anointed with the Holy Spirit. To surrender. That is the clue. That's what Mother Mary did. She surrendered. She did not understand. She did not understand how that would happen. But she surrendered. If that is the will of God, that God's will be done. She offered her life in the hands of God. That's when Jesus was conceived in the womb of Mother Mary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. My life does not depend on me anymore. I, it's not I who mold my destiny now. That's what sin is. In sin, in sin, I mold my destiny. That's what the prodigal son said, right? That's what he thought. All I need is money. If I, if I have money in my pocket, 
I can become big. I can go my way. I don't want my father. No, I don't want my father. I want his money. And he went. Wanting to mold his destiny. That ended up in a disaster. Disaster. And he was lost. That's when the Holy Spirit gave him the light to come back. My dear sisters and brothers, some of us could be sick. You have a problem. What am I to do? Well, the Holy Spirit is coming with you. God's own power. God's own power will continue to heal you. Continue to heal you. I spoke about two types of healings. An instantaneous healing where you can feel the healing already. But there is also a progressive healing. A healing that slowly, slowly comes into our body and mind. A progressive healing. God is with you. That's the promise the Lord is giving us today. The promise given to Mother Mary of the Holy Spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, Mother Mary, when she got the promise, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. She had three reactions. The angel said to her, she would conceive and bear a son. And she was deeply distressed. We are told she was deeply distressed. She was distressed. She could not understand. What does it all mean? What does it all mean? The Holy Spirit coming upon me. I will conceive and bear a son. What does it all mean? She did not understand anything. A second thing. She did not know how she would be able to conceive. She is not living with Joseph yet. How can she conceive and bear a son? Third, she was distressed and disturbed. Three things that happened to her. And the angel said to her three things. The angel said to her three things. One, the angel said, the Holy Spirit will come to you. This is the power of the Holy Spirit. He will not conceive in a natural way. No. God is raising you up to a supernatural way. Supernatural way of the Holy Spirit. The plan of God was revealed to her. This is God's plan. This is God's plan. And God's plan is to make you the mother of the Son of God. And the baby to be born will be the savior of the humankind. God's plan was revealed to her. Two, the angel also revealed to her, now this plan of God will be done in the power of the Holy Spirit. Not the natural way, but the supernatural way. Three, she began to rejoice. She began to rejoice. Incidentally, my dear sisters and brothers, when Jesus explained to us what the Holy Spirit does in our lives, what the Holy Spirit does in our lives, this is what Jesus also said, the Holy Spirit has three functions three functions in our life. And, and Jesus taught of the three names of the Holy Spirit. Three names of the Holy Spirit. My dear sisters and brothers, in the Bible, the name signifies the nature of the person. From the name, you would know what that person does. So three names, by giving three names to the Holy Spirit, Jesus taught us there are three functions for the Holy Spirit. One, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth. John chapter 16, verse 13, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Truth. 
as the spirit of truth what will the holy spirit do the holy spirit will lead you to the whole truth the holy spirit leading us to the whole truth what's the whole truth about anything the whole truth about anything is the plan of god you know often often we are in a rush we're in a haste to understand the why of things i fall sick why did i fall sick i failed in my business why did i fail in my business i have a problem why am i having a problem all the time we ask this question why did this happen to me and in our limited intelligence we come to wrong conclusions wrong answers but jesus is telling us jesus is telling us the holy spirit will lead you to the whole truth the whole truth about anything and everything is god's plan and god said it through prophet jeremiah i have a plan for you hidden in my mind for your prosperity for your good future so everything happening to me whether it's a failure whether it is a sickness whether it's a problem everything that happens to me is according to a plan of god what is that plan of god i must wait and pray i must wait and pray my dear sisters and brothers why is it god is not able to do miracles in our lives god is not able to do miracles in our lives because we are arrogant we are proud i want my way i want to mold my destiny i want to show others who i am this sort of arrogance mother mary said god will god will destroy the proud the proud and arrogant have no place in the kingdom of god whatever happens to us there are moments in our life when things are going wrong and we don't understand why things are going wrong we must be humble we must come before god wait and pray to understand god's plan a second name that jesus gave to the holy spirit jesus said the holy spirit is the power from above luke 24:49 luke 24:49 the holy spirit is the power from above there are two streams of powers one stream of powers i spoke to you about the fruits of the holy spirit galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 love and peace and joy the fruits of the holy spirit the nine fruits of the holy spirit these are powers of the holy spirit is also another stream of the powers of the holy spirit the gifts of the holy spirit romans chapter 8 romans chapter 8 first corinthians chapter 12 st paul teaches us these are the powers and all of us are anointed with these powers what's needed is to wait and pray i say i i see a sick person what do i do when i see a sick person i must be praying i must be praying i must realize i have a gift the gift of healing gift of healing i need to be praying for that person in the power of the holy spirit someone comes to me with a problem i must sit with him with her and open the bible and read and wait upon god to teach that person because that gift of teaching instruction is being given to us we need to learn more about the the gifts and fruits of the holy spirit now that is 
the second function of the Holy Spirit. The third function of the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit is the comforter. The Holy Spirit is the comforter. John chapter 16 verse 7. John chapter 16 verse 7. The comforter. The comfort of the Holy Spirit. You know Mother Mary, when she was anointed with the Holy Spirit, she was so comforted. She was rejoicing. She was praising God. She was singing. My soul rejoices in God my Savior. My soul magnifies my God rejoicing and praising God. Wasn't she? And she became so happy, the joy in her was contagious. Elizabeth began to rejoice and sing, praising God. And even the baby in the womb of Elizabeth began to dance out of joy, leaping for joy, we are told. We must be men and women of the joy of the Holy Spirit. Our Pope, Pope Francis, speaks all the time the need of becoming prophets of joy to a generation that is sad and tense and disturbed. My dear sisters and brothers, today we are waiting and praying for the Holy Spirit to descend upon us and fill us. Let us make a total surrender of our lives in the hands of God. That God's power of the Holy Spirit may come upon us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus.